For a session presented by Red Sea Global, please welcome Group Head of Global Brand Development for Red Sea Global, Tracy Lanza, in discussion with Skift President Carolyn Cremens. Good morning, Red Sea. Hello. Hello. How are you? Um, so, Red Sea is an archipelago of 90 islands, of which 22 are being developed, yes. and a few private islands here and there. By 2030, I heard uh, your CEO mention that you'll be home to 50 hotels. Yes, we will. And, keys. Yeah. and a few other islands. And, uh, uh, but let's bring it back to today, sure. 2023. Sure. Um, it's been very exciting. In September, you opened the first solar-powered airport. Yes, we that's did. That's carbon neutral. Yes, we did. And you welcomed your first visitors. I mean, how many destinations get to, like, welcome, like watch their first visitors get off of a plane. Yeah. Um, this is something you tell your grandkids, right? Absolutely. We had our VIP trip and we had ministers, we had members of our board, we had our friends from STA, and it was really, it was really something. I mean, the entire yeah. plane was filled with our VIPs, but also some of our longest standing employees. So it was a real celebration for those it people. It must have been. It's like something you remember, like it that was. you did in your it career. It was, it was. So tell us, what is the status of what's happening sure. today on the ground? A lot of effort went into making this happen. Bring us up to speed. Sure, so we actually were open for business. Um, we opened our first hotel on November uh, 1st. It was Six Senses. Mm. They are an absolutely wonderful hotel. They focus on wellness. They have an amazing spa um, center. They are a dune experience, which is really interesting because there is a proximity to the sea. And when people think about Saudi Arabia, they don't necessarily think about water and sea, sun, sea, sand. Think about sand, but they don't right. think about the sea. So it's really wonderful. Right. We're opening St. Regis at the end of this month in December. And then our next... Um, Hotel will come online uh, probably Jan, Feb, end of Jan, early Feb, and it's uh, Ritz Carlton, and it is called Najuma, which means star. So St. Regis and the Ritz Carlton are on two islands, sister islands, the Umahats. So we're really excited. And then there are, it's a whole year of moments for us opening things like our airport and expanding our offerings. Um, and so at the end of uh, 2024, early 2025, we'll be opening Shore Island which is our hub island. Um, and there will be a lot of wonderful, wonderful hotels, including Jumeirah, um, and including some new hotels that have not opened in the Middle East before, like Raffles and Rosewood and Mirabel. So that's, very that's exciting. Cool. And our international airport, which is, uh, I think, the first carbon neutral airport in the Middle East. Wow. Yeah. All right, so you're setting the bar. Yeah. Um, You've been there for three years now, mm -hmm. and I think from the longest time that I can remember here in Red Sea, um, there's always been this connection to the idea of regenerative tourism. Yes. And um, I, obviously everything that Skip reports on today is really how sustainability is not only top of mind, but we're now seeing consumers really take action um, in their choices. So Tracy, can you share, just in your opinion, how does regenerative tourism compare to a traditional sustainability model? Sure. Well, sustainability, which, and by the way, that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to compare them, but it's not because sustainability isn't a really wonderful and worthwhile pursuit, but that is about maintaining the status quo. And what we're trying to do with regenerative tourism, responsible development and regenerative tourism, is to grow, is to increase. So when we talk about regenerative, we talk about our commitment to a 30% net gain for the, the flora and the fauna and for the people, because that's part of regenerative is the social impact. We want to make sure that the communities that are, are there, that pre-existed us, are benefiting from, uh, from our development. So when we talk about things like um, corals, so I, I, I think corals is an interesting story. And, we, and didn't you make a big um, announcement at COP? We did, we yeah, did. Yeah. So there's a few different component parts of it. One is um, we launched our Red Sea Marine Life Institute, otherwise now known as the Coralium. Our commitment to corals is so important. And, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna dumb it down mostly for me because there were so too. many things that I learned when I got to Riyadh. And I, I this project is 
um, was unbelievable to me when I first heard about it, but it actually is quite real. So here's what's important about corals. Corals are only found on less than 1% of the seabed across the whole world, but they're home to 25% of the ocean population. So it's really, really important to protect them. But also what's interesting about corals is that they only spawn, they only breed once a year in the spring under the full moon. It's, it's quite mystical, isn't it, when wow, you say it like wow. that, right? So you don't have a chance for them to breed all the time like you might other plants. Right. So what we're focused on is to give the corals a better chance at surviving. So there are different techniques that we're, we're looking into. We're partnering with Cordap. We have uh, the Internet of Things that we're working on and monitoring. And we also are looking at um, helping them spore artificially, not artificially, but you know, with, with some help so it's not under the full moon all the time once a year so that we can increase the population and then share this information with the world. So for, for many reasons, the corals in the Red Sea are thriving, they're healthy, but it's a warmer sea. So in places like Australia and Mexico who are having you know, significant coral bleaching episodes, we want to be able to help them share our learnings and provide these new techniques. Really How many of you knew about coral? <laughs> I, I, I just got a, a lesson yeah. from coral. <laughs> and, you know, and mangroves too. You know, I, yeah. again, I didn't know about mangroves, but the carbon sequestration that they take from the air, the carbon, and they sequester it down in the roots in the soil is, is what blue carbon is. It's, you know, it's this natural capital. So it's, you know, I'm, I'm here because I'm a destination marketer. I'm here because of the exciting projects. But it's amazing what, what Red Sea Global is doing to actually, you know, walk the walk. Well, quite different from your last responsibility. <laughs> uh, Tracy was um, leading Brand USA. Um, but t tell me about, you know, it's great to hear about all the efforts that are being taken, but um, are you, um, not to put you on the spot, but are you measuring success? Absolutely. Like, are, are, you, are you holding yourselves accountable? Absolutely, and there's, two, there's, a, there's a number of different ways. We published our first baseline survey two years ago, which is to measure, you know, what, is this, what are the, uh, the hawksbill turtle populations? What are the mangrove populations? What are these things that we are measuring constantly so that we can make sure that we are actually doing what we're saying? We have a mangrove um, nursery, and we are committed to uh, planting 50 million mangroves um, by 2030. So everything's got this. And in terms of you know, switching it over to the social side of things, um, we are committed to the people of Saudi Arabia and to creating a, a hospitality industry which, which has room for growth because of our, our commitment to Vision 2030 and to increasing hospitality to 10% of our GDP. Will you have a school? Will you have a hospital? Are you, yeah, we have a school? number of schools, actually. We have- Already. Um, yeah, we have, we have vocational schools so that you could learn um, how to work at an airport, how to, how to be an airplane mechanic, things mm -hmm. like that. We have English for hospitality. We have uh, schools for um, food and cuisine and culinary. We uh, have an elite grad program where we hire fresh grads and hire them by RSG. Um, we, our schools help us provide employees for our hotels. So we really are you know, creating an industry at the same time that we're also trying to be responsible for the environment. Right, makes sense. Um, so, so you have really, um, not have, you are um, pioneering really in this space um, with all the things that you're doing that um, ladder up to regenerative tourism. So you're kind of creating this blueprint for the rest of us, right, and for other destinations. Uh, you probably have a lot of best practices that you could probably share with yeah. some of the developers in the room, uh, who, people who want to adapt that. Yeah. yeah, and interesting, so as we sit on the board of the affiliate members team at the UNWTO, and we, one of the things that we're doing with them over the next 2024, 2025, is to bring this idea of regenerative tourism to the affiliate members on a regional basis so that we can share our learnings. And, and by the way, our learnings are, are, are you know, successes and not successes, you know, because I think that's important too. It's not just you know, success after success, but if something doesn't work the way we had planned it, we want to share that too. And when we rebranded last year, because when we were, we were here, we had just rebranded from the Red Sea Development Company, which was a single project developer to Red Sea Global. 
our global means many things. Part of it is our commitment to people and planet, certainly for, for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, but we, do, we don't want to be the only. We want to be the first, and we want to, at some point, be one of many um, developers that, that take this responsibility seriously. So there's a, I mean, there's a lot of land there, right? I think I saw somewhere a stat that it's like a third, larger than a third of the European countries, Saudi right? Arabia is, <laughs> Saudi Arabia is huge. Right, it's right. huge. Right. Um, so what, what are some of the um, bigger opportunities and challenges that you have um, for Red Sea and also any advice for the, for the global sure. travel industry? Well, you know, I'd, I'd love to talk a little bit about travelers and actually what Oliver ha said on stage and what Skip has, has shared via research is very true. And we see this in our own research. People want to make a difference with their travel dollars. So starting, starting there. Yeah. And you know, I, I sit. I've got four kids, and I, you know, we, I, you know, feel like I've got my pulse, you know, to use. But they really want to make a difference, and they really care. And and people want to put their dollars where they can make a difference, or at minimum, do no harm. Right. And so this idea of knowing is the new owning. There was a wonderful research study by uh, called Luxury 3.0, where it's not things, it's experiences. It's right. everything Oliver just said. Right. And I think we need to, if you're, it, we're a business, like, you know, we're not doing this just for, you know, altruism. We want to do this as a business. Right. You need to look at what people want to spend money on. And that doesn't mean people will necessarily be tagging turtles or, you know, planting mangroves, although there are those opportunities, certainly for people. But just knowing that you are investing in a place that is doing good and that you can perhaps even learn some tricks or rituals that you can take home with you, that's, that's really, I think, kind of where that starts right there. Um, but I think measurement is key. You know, we are building Always. what we're calling a smart destination, and there are different elements to that. Some of it is, you know, tapping into trends like seamless travel that other, other places have done well and are learning some lessons there. But also for us, it's measurement. So when we commit to this 30% net, you know, gain for the environment, then we have to measure our water usage and we have to measure our electricity because we are off the grid, right? We've got the world's largest battery storage facility. We've built it. Even our second uh, battery storage facility is larger than all the other battery, battery storage facilities that are out there. And we're powered by sunlight, but we have to measure that. There's no end, you know, and, and right. we, we laughed about this, right? This is not like a fundraising thermostat where you get to your goal and then, yay, everybody claps. This is a never-ending project, which, as I said to you, is beautiful and terrifying because <laughs> it's a forever project. Sadly, this time is ending with us on stage. <laughs> but thank you so much thank and keep so up much. the great work. Thank you.